Good morning. Good morning. Hope, hub, rise and shine. It's a new day. It's winning Wednesday. God's words of wisdom Wednesday. Um, this morning, really quick, um, I'm going to speak a little bit about Moses. Moses, Moses, Moses. Moses in the Bible, that is. <laughs> Just in case one of y'all's name is Moses. So I'm meditating on the word of God in Exodus and the story of Moses. Moses was one of those prominent, preeminent prophets in the Bible. He, I think, head of our shoulders, is one of those individuals in the Bible that had an amazing and probably the closest, the most unique relationship with God. I know all of you know his story. I've been here on the Hope Hub. I've talked about his story in the desert in the burning bush. And you know, the way he spoke to God, and if you go back to Exodus, and I challenge you to go back to Exodus and read his story, you will be amazed at the back and forth dialogue that Moses had with the Creator God. And whenever I read that story, I am almost envious that in those days, which I think we still have that ability in this day and age, he could have that close intimate relationship with God where he would talk to God back and forth and ask him questions and express his fears, express his insecurities. Like if you remember at the burning bush, Moses told, was asking God, tell me who you are. If you're asking me to go save a million people, the Israelites out of Egypt, go back to Pharaoh and tell him to let your people go. Lord, you need to tell me, who am I saying sent me? And <laughs> some of us don't remember the fact that Moses did not grow up in the Hebrew faith. He did not grow up knowing who Yahweh was. He did not grow up knowing who Jehovah was. He probably grew up, well, he did grow up in Pharaoh's house, um, learning about all kinds of different gods and deities and Pharaoh himself being the God of Egypt, right? Because God, Pharaoh was treated pretty much like a God. And so Moses was scared. If you all remember, he left um, Egypt after committing a crime. He killed an Egyptian um, to save a Hebrew slave, right? Do you all remember that story? So that's what had happened. So he left the scene of a crime and he ran away and for 40 years he was in the backside of the desert the backside of the desert with now instead of having or living a life of luxury living a life of um uh, of wealth and um you know beautiful things and um slaves and servants all around him where he didn't have to do anything he was now in the backside of the desert with calluses in his, in his hands right um with um uh, dust in his feet um, doing probably the antithesis in terms of a job um, that the antithesis of what his future could have been when he was back in Egypt right so in Egypt he was a prince a prince and now he is a shepherd in the desert tending flock right with um, sandals uh, with feet full of dust with raggedy clothes right you know living that normal lifestyle and probably having to tend uh, fend for himself and fight food on a daily basis right so when he gets called out by god he's like first of all you want me to what you want me to go back to the princes of egypt the um vips in egypt the royalty of egypt go back and then they see me a shell of a man 40 years later and I think at that time he was 80 years old he was no longer the young strapping prince that he was in Egypt and he's being told yes I want you to go back and tell Pharaoh that I the Lord your God Yahweh I am ha is with you and is telling you to let my people go so that story for whatever reason because uh, Moses goes back and forth with God and he's asking him questions and he's saying I'm not articulate I'm not eloquent I'm not the person that I should that you should send me I don't have the skill set I don't have the abilities it always gives me hope 
for people like me, people like you, people who believe that you're not the one, right? That God has it wrong, that he maybe should send someone else, that he should send someone who has a brimming vessel, you know, someone who has that full vessel, who has the knowledge, the skills, the abilities in terms of your own physical eyes. You see so many other people who have the talent, the gifting that you don't have. But God says, no, I'm not, I'm not using or I don't look for full vessels. I look for empty vessels as long as those vessels are willing to be used because it's not what you have in terms of your own abilities and gifts. It's what I have and what I bring to the table and that's sufficient. You don't need your own strength. I go with you. You are essentially um, nothing without me. And so God continues to speak to Moses in that instance, as well as in other instances much later, where they have this relationship where Moses is back and forth with God. And God is so gracious in his mercy. And that's one of the glimpses in terms of the Bible, where you see that even when you have fears and insecurities, even when you look at your situation and you're saying to yourself and you're saying to God, God, I know you're telling me to do this thing. And I know you are more than able, but the devil or life or um, man-made things or what, um, I be, what um, has been evidenced in my life physically seems to have much, much more of a hold of, on me than what you're saying that I have spiritually in the spiritual realm, right? Is that you? Is that you, Hope Hub? Have you ever been in that situation where you're looking, God is telling you to do something that's overwhelming, something that's bigger than you, right? And then in your own power, you're looking at it and you're like, there is no way that he is calling me. I think he has it wrong. And what I'm here to remind you this morning is that um, you're not supposed to do it in your own power. Secondly, God never calls us to do things that are easy. God never calls us to do things that are comfortable. God never calls us to do things that um, seem possible in our own eyes because when he calls us, he wants to make evidence his strength in us. And I'm not sure if I'm saying this properly, but, but essentially what God does is he has to give you something that is kind of stretching you, that is kind of pushing you into your greatness because he is the only one who understands who you are. He knows who you are. He knows what he, he put in you. He knows what you're able to do. He knows your life history and your experiences and how all these things that you've gone through will corroborate to um, propel you into the next chapter. He knows how the things that you did, criminal or otherwise, you know, like with Moses, the scene of a crime, right? He knows that that place that you put back in the recesses of your mind, that you forgot, that you hid from, that it was a place of fear, right? Back in Egypt, that scene of the crime, he knows that he's coming back to make that place your place of breakthrough. He knows that that place is the place that will be not only the place of your breakthrough, but the, pro the place of other people's breakthrough, right? And so I just think God is phenomenal, y'all. I think he's amazing. And today I am um, challenging you guys to look back at your life experiences and see how God in a very unique way has been part and parcel of your life experiences. How God has walked with you, how God has saved you from certain situations, how God has shown himself strong in your life because I know I cannot, I cannot be the only one. I cannot be the only one that God has protected and provided for and been there for and given me peace and given me um, miraculous testimonies. I cannot be the only one. And so this morning, what I am uh, bringing to bear or, or asking you guys to consider is that in order for you to meet, to have met with God, there are three things that would have had to occur in your life. Number one is the miraculous. 
and the miraculous does not mean necessarily the physical in fact the miraculous most often times is a changed heart you know I love it when preachers talk talk about their testimony and how they used to be in Sodom and Gomorrah and in the clubs and in the uh, those CD joints and um, how their lives were so much more different than what they are today or they were in gangs or they were criminals but then the miracle in their life that they talk about the most is that God changed their heart that they were able to live that lifestyle and join the kingdom lifestyle right so you've heard all those testimonies that's miraculous and I understand how most of us look for the physical miracles which God is way more than able to do but even more than that he is able to perform the spiritual miracles in our lives and one incident where that happened is when Jesus when I think in the story it's Luke 5 where um, a paralyzed man is dropped into a house where Jesus was preaching and his friends brought him and they carried him and they were dropping him into their house created a hole in the roof so they could lower him in front of the Lord Jesus for him to get his miracle because they knew that this was a man who performed miracles and it was not um, it was it, he was more than able to to heal this paralyzed man and they dropped him in and Jesus looked at the man and the man looked at Jesus and the, Jesus looked at the man, the man looked at Jesus and Jesus said, do you want to be healed? And the man said, yes. And I think Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And I can imagine how his friends were like, your sins are forgiven. Like you're supposed to heal this man physically. But even before he healed him physically, the miracle that God performed, that Jesus performed in that house, was to heal his heart and turn his heart back to God. Because number one, God looks at the soul and saving your soul. The other thing that you have to do or have to have had in order for you to have met God is experiences, is have experiences in your life. <laughs> if you talk to anyone uh, older than you and you're saying, you know, I'm still waiting for God to show him str himself strong in my life, that person will probably tell, tell you, keep on living, baby. Just keep on living. Because isn't that the truth? If all of us go through life experiences and those life experiences are evidence for the most part, of God's faithfulness in our lives and that's what like sometimes even when I'm walking in the cool of the morning I start thinking back in my on my life and I'm like my God God surely from all these experiences that I've collected over my lifetime God has really shown himself strong in my life and faithful in my life and that leads to the T which is testimonies that's the other thing that in order for you to have met God and show God's evidence in your life is your testimony and on the hope hub i know i talk a lot about testimonies especially in the past i used to be like come tell us your testimony tell us your story but what i ask most people or what i wish most people would do and i also force myself to do this as well is when i talk to people and not here on the hope hub necessarily but in person is to tell your unfiltered testimony we're living in an age of filters where you know you can change your picture to look any kind of way and show yourself in whatever light that you want in order for people not to judge your pimples and your scars and whatever else in the blemishes of your face or your life right in the same way a lot of us Christians we have experiences we have miracles we have testimonies but we try and tell them in a very edited ma manner <laughs> very scripted vague manner you don't tell the whole story now I'm not saying come here and be vulnerable but especially when you find someone that's gone through something major in their life and they're thinking God I, I don't know if God is willing or able to forgive me 
or I don't know if God is gracious enough or maybe my past is so bad that there's no way that God can forgive me of this thing that I did this crime that I committed like Moses right where I killed a Hebrew man right so all these things could be part of your past but God says no your story I am very attuned and intimate with your story I know exactly morning I know exactly who you are I know what you've gone through and that doesn't matter to me what matters is that you're willing and able to use that mess in your life and make it into a message that test in your life and make it into a testimony that pain in your life and turn it and channel it into purpose so I'm challenging all of you today to take those experiences your miracles your experiences your testimonies and go out into the world and be that light and encourage someone else and provide um, uh, some some hope in someone else's life because we surely all need it and not everyone has been through um, uh, has met God let me let me say this not everyone has that close and personal relationship that maybe you have where you can tell someone look I understand that all these things have happened in your life but God also forgave me for XYZ right and most of us are usually like uh, the pastors will say yeah and then I met the Lord Jesus and my hands were made brand new and I looked at my feet and my feet were white as snow and then I looked at my face and I had a glow you know and then it's like uh, a regular Christian is like, what the, like, what, what, what are you talking about? Just tell me in layman's terms <laughs> exactly what you went through. And let me tell you, if you can sit someone down and tell them, look, this was my life. This is who I was. But God performed this miracle in my life where he changed my life and he changed my heart and he gave me a new heart. He spoke to me and I listened. He showed me a sign and I saw it. He, he sh well, in the, the day of Moses, can you imagine Moses spoke to God face to face? When I look at the Bible and I read about Moses, I'm just like in awe because I'm like, why? Like, Lord, I wish I was like Moses where I would go into a tent, into my prayer closet and the cloud would be following me and hover under like right under my house and I would have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with God because that's what Moses had and you know even in that relationship Moses still doubted God's presence like he still said God you're telling me to take the Israelites now to the promised land right how am I gonna know that you're with us how who do you need me to take with me who actually he says who who should I go with and God says um, I will go with you and Moses still asked um, okay I understand you're saying that you will go with me but can you show me a sign a true and sure sign that you will indeed go with us because you your presence in this camp amongst the Israelites is the only unique identifier that makes us different from any other group any other nation any other um, tribe in the desert you the this is the only unique marker that you are present or in our lives right and so God says yes I just I just told you I will go with you I have been with you Moses and so <laughs> I always have like five messages in one and then I close like one two three times like a preacher but that's the other message to you guys today is as you go out understand that God is with you understand that God walks with you and he keeps telling you listen I am telling you my presence will go with you and even though I'm envious this morning about God's ability to be and walk and speak to me because when I read the stories in the Bible I'm like my god I, I mean this is amazing that God walked with Moses God spoke to Moses and God saw Moses face to face right and so I'm envious of that relationship but I also understand that God still speaks today it's up to us to listen and so I ask you today, are you listening? Let me tell you a final, like a, a little joke that yesterday I was telling my husband, right? 
So this man um, thinks his wife isn't hearing him, like has a hearing problem um, because he's, he's, he talks to his wife and his wife doesn't seem to hear, like he'll have to yell in order for his wife to hear. And so he goes to a doctor, <laughs> a, a ear doctor, and he says, I can't really, I'm not sure exactly what I need to tell, uh, how, how I can really tell that my wife has a hearing problem. And if she does, I don't know how to tell her that maybe she needs to get a hearing aid because she's not the type of person that will take that news uh, very well. So the doctor tells him, well, there is one test, one test that you can do in order for you to know whether your wife has a hearing problem. And so what I want you to do is <laughs> you go to her, uh, you, you go to the house and then go 50 feet, 40 feet, 30, 20, 10 feet. And at each level of feet, I want you to say something to her and see if she responds. So go 50, then 40, then 30. And then if it's like right at 10 feet and she doesn't see, she doesn't um, respond, and then she needs a hearing aid. So this husband, right, he goes into the house, he goes to the living room, which is about like 50 feet, and then he's like, hey, Judy, what's for dinner? Nothing. Then he goes to 40 feet, and he's like, hey, sweetie, what's for dinner? Nothing. No response. So he goes to um, 30 feet, and he's like, hey, honey, I don't know if you heard me, but I'm asking what's for dinner? Nothing. Then he goes 20 feet. <laughs> He's like, Judy, honey, what's for dinner? Nothing. So now he goes right at her ear. And he's like, baby, what's for dinner? And then she says, Sam, for the fifth time, I said chicken. <laughs> ah, so, okay, so that's the joke. But the joke is that, is it him that needed a hearing aid or was it his wife, right? Because <laughs> obviously she was speaking, she was speaking to him and answering him, but he couldn't hear her. So, okay, my husband's calling me, I have to hurry and go. So, essentially, um, my, my, um, my hope strategy or hope lifeline for you guys today is listen listen to god clarice good morning my dear sister as well have a blessed day have a blessed day so yeah my hope lifeline is continue to listen to god continue to have conversations with god he is listening and so you don't have to have long conversations all you have to do is <laughs> i know right that's what needed the hearing aid you don't have to have long conversations. It can just be help me or good morning, Lord, or thank you, Lord, or praise you, God. That's, that's enough conversation for you. But also understand that if you have fears and insecurities, God is also listening. God hears you. God understands. God is so merciful and gracious that no matter what, he will listen to you. He will, even when you express those fears and act as though the things and the circumstances of life are bigger than you and bigger than him. He understands that we as human beings need that comfort and that validation that God continues to be with us. All right, let me go, y'all. Have a blessed winning Wednesday. Love you, Hope Hub. Bye.